Hi there, welcome back to another Crypto Day video. It's Friday, which means another crypto interest rates and news update. Today is the 16th of April, 2021. And as always, um, we start by taking a look at any new coins or interest rate changes and nothing uh, major to report. I updated this uh, last uh, weekend. Uh, the only thing I did notice this week was that um, last week we uh, we talked about the, the drop in Celsius rates. So a lot of people were a, bit, a little bit annoyed because they were kind of gloating that their rates were kind of higher than kind of BlockFi, et cetera, et cetera. And then within a few days, they down their rates and they're substantially worse now so three and a half percent just over 3.51 percent um like for like if you are an international user um but still 6.2 percent in the us now this used to be for the first two bitcoin and it was actually dropped to the first bitcoin now i um read on the celsius subreddit i was on there earlier and a lot of people were saying that this had been increased back up to the first two bitcoin um and were kind of like speculating whether this was you know a bit of a publicity kind of like um ploy because of the kind of hack and we'll talk about the hack in a minute so if anybody is in the us if you can let me know if you're getting 6.2 uh, percent on your first two bitcoin on just your first bitcoin that would be interesting to know but no um big news apart from that i made a few uh, small changes to some of the other coins in celsius uh, last week so uh, moving on taking a look at the um coin prices <coughs> excuse me sorry the token prices and um Last week, fantastic week for Celsius uh, last week and a pretty poor week this week. So down 12.2%. Uh, complete opposite for the other two coins. So the other two coins, so Crypto.com, uh, the CRO token and Nexo token were pretty flat last week, but um, both having decent weeks. So Crypto.com up 12.3%, but Nexo, the standout performer, up 30% over the last uh, seven days. So really good performance there. Um, Celsius Network, it was on the way down before the um, the hack kind of announcement. So I don't know um, how much that has affected it, maybe a little bit over the last kind of couple of days, but uh, certainly it had a really kind of um, sharp increase in kind of price. And often when you see a token go up uh, really substantially, there is a bit of a kind of pullback. So we'll see what happens over the next uh, few weeks. But uh, congratulations, nice week for uh, Nexo. If you're choosing to be paid in Nexo tokens, 30% uh, up over the last week. So really uh, nice for you. And obviously the really big story this week um, is the Celsius hack. Um, now, if you haven't heard about this, um, you know, make sure you're kind of like um, uh, checking the kind of Twitter and stuff like that. But basically um, there was a fraudulent email and or text sent to some Celsius users. Uh, basically that was uh, suggesting that Celsius had launched a web wallet. Uh, and then when you went onto the kind of site, it was pretty well put together actually. It looked um, pretty authentic at first glance. Uh, if you went onto the site, it then asked you to put in your basic, your private keys to an Ethereum wallet in order to kind of sync it up. And uh, obviously if you did that, then they had access to your private keys and they took your funds. And um, you know, we talk about kind of um, these kind of things, but there were people um, that have been kind of hacked that have lost uh, substantial amounts of money through their uh, MetaMask wallets or whatever. So um, basically what happened was on the April the 14th, a few people started receiving these kind of um, emails and also text messages, SMS messages. Um, and then they notified, I believe, kind of Celsius. I don't think Celsius knew themselves until people started contacting them. Uh, so we'll just read through the first couple of uh, paragraphs and then we'll talk a little bit about the kind of implications of this. So uh, this came out um, from Alex um, and this came via email and there's a link to this uh, website. Ironically, it's not a secure uh, website that the uh, statement is on. Um, but uh, it says basically, Dear Celsius, nothing is more important to us than complete transparency with our community. That's why I'm updating you with all the details we currently have about a recent security incident that has affected some of our Celsius customers. I'll start with the most important news. All funds are safe. Our backend systems remain fully secure and have not been breached. Customer funds and sensitive data are not affected nor connected to any front facing or external communications platforms. Um, I think the first thing here is that um, they are desperately um, trying to kind of like kind of spin this a little bit. And um, I think what's annoyed a lot of people is that Celsius and well, particularly Alex, so in every AMA I've ever watched. I've never watched an AMA with Alex where he hasn't criticized BlockFi, where he hasn't gone on about the fact that, you know, kind of like, you know, Celsius is kind of better, how Black BlockFi was hacked, etc., etc., and they'd never been hacked, and kind of gloating almost on it. And now they have been hacked, and it's a bit embarrassing. Um, but they, I feel what they're doing is very much what BlockFi did. So BlockFi very much downplayed. So BlockFi, a few months ago, if you're in the space then, um, had um, a hack, a new employer working from home had an SMS, um, a SIM swap attack, and basically they got into um, a marketing database that had a lot of sensitive information in it. Um, now, 
BlockFi, you know, downplayed that at the time very much in the same way as this, that they were like, you know, none of our kind of systems have been hacked, you know, funds are secure, etc., etc. It's just a marketing kind of list. But that marketing list had uh, not only email addresses and phone numbers, but also physical addresses and in some cases account balances and stuff like that as well. So it was a lot more serious, uh, I felt, and many other people felt that block then BlockFi um, sort of kind of portrayed it more as a sort of like a kind of minor hack. And I think Celsius are doing the same thing here. Um, <clears throat> saying that sensitive data has not been affected and then admitting that through a third party platform they were using that people's email address and phone number uh, in many cases specific to Celsius and not specific to other uh, platforms. So a lot of people will use a specific email address for each platform so that they know so that if anything like this happens, uh, they know exactly where the kind of hack kind of came from. And that does seem to be the case here. It doesn't seem to be um, the case that it was like, you know, kind of like people were kind of like, you know, sort of uh, scraping kind of addresses from third party hacks of other kind of platforms. And this is the way they seem to be kind of uh, trying to kind of play it. So they've kind of like sort of taken a step back and said, oh, we're looking into it. And they're like basically saying now that... Um, what we know here, so an unauthorized party managed to gain access to a backup third party email distribution system, which had connections to a partial customer email list. Now it must be said that I didn't receive either the SMS or uh, the email. So uh, it wasn't a complete uh, list or certainly they haven't contacted a complete kind of list of kind of people. So it looks like it was a partial list. Uh, and then they said once inside the system, this unauthorized party sent a fraudulent email announcement, of which we know some of this recipients to be Celsius customers. Now, I think this is a little disingenuous, of which we know some of the recipients. Now, um, as far as I am aware, nobody who doesn't have a Celsius account uh, received this. It does seem to be a targeted attack um, through one of Celsius's systems or third party systems that they are using. It's not um, as far as I can kind of tell, um, and I'm you know welcome to be um, corrected on this, um, it's not uh, a larger hack like you know somebody just scraping through like the Facebook data leak or something like that and just sending these speculative emails out. So I think that's a little bit disingenuous. Um, we will have to see uh, what happens over the next week. The AMA today will uh, be kind of interesting. I think this will be critical as to how they kind of um, recover from this and kind of like and, and play this because. Uh, I think there's been criticisms in the past of the AMA that they take a lot of kind of like, you know, questions about, you know, oh, how, how amazing Celsius is and stuff like that. And, you know, you know, real sort of like, um, sort of like, I don't know, but you sort of like, sort of like kind of almost not made up uh, questions, but questions that are basically kind of just glorifying how great uh, Celsius are. And a lot of people are saying, look, we don't want, you know, uh, we want to be able to vote on the questions that we want kind of answered. We don't want to just be typing stuff into kind of a live chat. Um, and they have, you know, serious questions to ask, uh, answer, I think. And I think particularly because of Alex's attitude to other kind of platforms and how how amazing Celsius are and stuff like that. I think then when they have an attack, it almost feels a little bit kind of worse than other platforms. You very rarely hear, you know, a block fire or a lead or people from uh, kind of Nexo outwardly kind of criticizing individual kind of companies, certainly not at the same kind of rate that Alex does, uh, particularly with kind of BlockFi. So it'd be interesting to see how they kind of play this. Um, I will be watching the AMA later to see exactly how it's kind of handled. But um, there was um, a hack of some description, you know, people's email addresses and uh, or phone numbers have been uh, released. And as I said, a lot of these were specific to Celsius. So it isn't a more generic one that uh, they're just trying to kind of get the information. So um, it you know, it could be a lot kind of worse. And um, I think in some ways you see the kind of the best and the worst of the community when something like this happens. So uh, over the last couple of weeks, we talked, I think it might have even been last week, we talked about uh, Leden introducing the anti-phishing code, uh, something that Crypto.com did actually quite a while ago, um, meaning that basically you could put in, you know, like a, a safe word, as it were. And whenever they uh, an official bit of correspondence gets sent to you, it includes that kind of word. So it stops these kind of... Um, these kind of kind of attacks. So if you'd received one, it doesn't have that kind of word. You'd be, you'd know it wasn't actually from uh, Celsius. Uh, so uh, on the positive side, people are uh, you know are calling for things like this to be kind of implemented. Um, on the other side, I had you know people kind of defending Celsius and saying, oh well, you know my bank was kind of hacked and they took like weeks to admit it and stuff like that, as if you know what Celsius is Celsius are doing is somehow kind of like uh, a you know above and kind of beyond. But you know they are having to address this because. 
members of their community had been targeted and had pointed it out to Celsius. If they'd done nothing, you know, it would have been an absolute PR disaster. So I don't think it's a case of them, you know, desperately trying to be as transparent as possible, no matter how they kind of spin this here. So uh, interesting to watch the AMA. I advise anybody um, that uses Celsius or is considering using it uh, to take a look at the AMA later today. But uh, we'll talk about this, no doubt, uh, more in the next kind of couple of weeks once we get a little bit more information about it. But um a few more stories just to cover very quickly. The first is the Berlin hard fork. So if, um, this is um, this will have affected basically all the kind of different platforms. So basically, um, trading, deposits, and withdrawals and stuff like that for Ethereum uh, was shut down on most of these kind of platforms. I know certainly uh, Crypto.com and Swissborg and stuff like that uh, for a certain amount of time. Why this hard fork was carried out? Now uh, the hard fork has now been uh, completed successfully, and I believe that uh, withdrawals and deposits have now been uh, reinstated on all the platforms that we kind of cover in this video. But um, basically, it was a hard fork uh, that went live with um, four different EIPs. Um, this isn't this isn't to be confused with the London hard fork, and the London hard fork is the contentious EIP fifteen fifty nine, which is uh, the big change to the kind of fee structure. So there were four um, EIPs included in this hard fork. You can read through them kind of here. I'll put the links to all these stories uh, below. But if you had been um, wondering what was happening with deposits and withdrawals over the last uh, couple of days. That's uh, probably what it was. And if you kind of like check back into your platform now, whichever one you're using it should all be uh, back on now. And then just a couple of ones I want to kind of mention. Uh, firstly, crypto.com. So um, I actually, uh, this was actually published on the 1st of April on their blog, uh, but I didn't actually receive this like the email uh, sort of outlining it until the 11th. So until like sort of uh, a few days ago. Um, but basically it's going through all the different kind of uh, stuff that um, Crypto.com has been doing in March. We won't do uh, go through all of them. Uh, it's quite a long kind of read. It's quite a, uh, an in-depth kind of piece, but there's a few bits that uh, I think kind of like um, a stick out that we might not have talked about or we might have talked about at the time. Uh, I think the big one was the Crypto.com announcing the um, Global Alliance Partnership uh, with Visa and the fact that they would have um, settlements um, on USDC uh, via uh, Crypto.com. So uh, that was a really interesting thing. The NFT platform we did talk about and the mainnet launch. Um, the other um, thing is a couple of partnerships uh, that we mentioned briefly, the Formula One one. There's also an NHL uh, National Hockey League um, a tie up with the Montreal Canadiens um, and more interesting I think for many of um, the users is the virtual Visa card launch. So um, something that happens um, with the kind of sign up, they, they, there was often like quite a delay, particularly in the EU, I believe, uh, for sign up for new cards and actually receiving those cards. In some cases, uh, many, many kind of months. Now, um, uh, now they've launched virtual cards. So this is something that other platforms had already launched. But basically, if you apply for a crypto.com card now, they will send you the kind of details and you can use it virtually. So you can use it online. You won't be obviously able to use it in a shop, uh, touch and go until you actually receive the physical card. But as soon as you've applied and you've been accepted, you can uh, start using it online while you're waiting for your physical card to arrive. So that's a really good uh, bit of kind of news. And then there was various other bits and pieces. Um, and as I said, we won't go through kind of all of them. I think this um, this uh, Crypto.com Capital is actually quite interesting. This is basically like an angel investment, sort of like a VC kind of fund that they're launching. Um, and there's lots of other kind of things, um, changes to the VIP program, um, uh, various um, bits and pieces. But as I said, we won't go through all of these kind of in detail. Uh, but yes, yeah, a uh, lot of stuff going on with kind of Crypto.com. I've sometimes been a bit critical that I think they are trying to do too much and they sort of like sort of jump about from you know one fad to the next you know with the launch of uh, lots of different kind of things but you know I think their kind of core um, functionality I think the the card stuff which was always their co uh, core functionality I think it probably is still the best um, crypto backed kind of uh, prepaid kind of debit card out there um, I have used it a bit um, it, it's not been without its kind of issues, but um, I think, you know, compared to the competition, they're doing pretty well on that front. Uh, interesting to see all the other kind of bits and bobs uh, they are throwing out. And on a similar vein, uh, I said we'd talk about this with Nexo uh, last week. So this was basically something again that came out about a week ago. And uh, basically it's like an overview of what they've done uh, over Q1. Now it's a little bit shorter than crypto.com one, so we can run through these quickly. Um, so most of these we've actually probably uh, touched on over in the weekly uh, emails, but um, 
stuff like the higher loan to value so if you have a crypto backed loan you can now get um, a higher loan to value there's always a risk of getting liquidated if you kind of do this and uh, next have been notorious for liquidating people uh, in the past and seem to have necessarily learned their lesson uh, but the next exchange going live was quite interesting uh, this is quite interesting as well 291 nexo token all-time high and if we jump into the actual price that we looked at earlier you can see uh, it's 364 today so they've had a, a really good uh, surge over and above this uh, at the beginning or the first half of April uh, we talked about the insurance stuff and various other bits and pieces um, free crypto withdrawals uh, that's changed uh, quite a bit. Uh, it used to be unlimited and now it's uh, tied into your uh, level, your membership kind of level. Uh, but the monthly AMAs, this is something they've kind of launched. And fixed terms, which again, I think was quite contentious and not necessarily a good thing. In order to get the rates that you were previously earning, you now have to fix uh, your terms. And if you don't fix your terms, you're actually earning a little bit less than before. So that's not kind of great. But there are also some teasers about stuff that's coming in Q2. Uh, so the right to vote is brought to you by Nexonomics. This is uh, something that's been... Uh, seen in the uh, the web application seen in the website when you log into your kind of account uh, we've seen the kind of voting stuff but without being able to kind of actually do anything um, various other stuff so a new Nexo exchange feature that will aid crypto adoption and even greater transparency I don't know whether this might be some kind of proof of reserves or something like that so uh, some interesting stuff coming up from uh, Nexo on the other hand I've I talked last week about um, the KYC and AML ones and a few people reached out to me uh, with some horror stories about Nexo um, and I just wanted to run through one of them not because I'm kind of bashing on Nexo and I think we can probably learn um, some valuable lessons about all of these kind of different kind of platforms particularly you know as we're now kind of well into this kind of bull run and if you're looking to take kind of profits or do anything like that maybe uh, later on in this kind of bull run um, you probably should be prepared to do it so uh, basically somebody contacted me uh, I won't use their actual name we'll call them Bob for example uh, they had some euros in the Nexo platform that they tried to withdraw to uh, a bank account that was owned by a family member um, and I think the two things that come out of this story a um a lot of these platforms have grown massively uh, so we look at the 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 increase in users on uh, nexo and celsius and kind of leaden and block fires rates have changed and swung up and down and stuff like that uh, a lot of these platforms have got a, a massive influx of new users and they don't have the support staff to be able to uh, cater to them basically so the, this chap um he tried to withdraw some um euros for family members account it failed he you know raised a ticket or contacted them to ask what um what the problem was uh, and it was about a month till they got back to him and they got back to him with an automated email that basically said we haven't responded in so long we're just going to close the ticket not that he hadn't responded in so long they were closing it but they hadn't bothered to respond so they were going to close the ticket um and he had to kind of like um respond in a certain way to kind of keep it open um and they basically they eventually uh, responded and said uh, it has to be a bank account in your name which I, I don't have an issue with um this is this sort of anti-money laundering and know your customer stuff that everyone has to uh, jump through um so he tried a withdrawal to an account in his name which failed and then uh I think the real frustration was that every time there was an issue he would contact them and it would be weeks and weeks and weeks and he'd spent basically basically uh, has spent best part of Q1 so three months trying to get this kind of sorted and it's still not sorted um, so that failed they eventually um, replied and said oh um, you can only withdraw to an account where you have actually sent money to the Nexo platform already from that account um, so he went back and tried to do that but his bank will not allow him to send money to the Nexo platform through this kind of account so he's now stuck in a situation with uh, he can't get money out because it has to be to an account where you've previously sent money to them but a lot of accounts will not allow you to send money to them uh, he hasn't had a resolution um, now I, this isn't um, I mean this particular instance was Nexo but this is not um, exclusive to Nexo I've heard about people um, having great service from a company like Swissborg, Swissborg which is a far smaller kind of platform um, and are now suddenly you know waiting weeks for replies because they've had a massive influx of kind of users and I think all these platforms uh, really need to take a good hard look uh, get more support staff on board uh, get more customer service kind of uh, people on board so if you have had issues with any kind of platforms feel free to uh, reach out to me there's there's not necessarily a huge amount I can do 
but I think it's good to share uh, these kind of like stories and these kind of concerns. And um, I think the upshot of uh, this one particular story with kind of Nexo was the fact that uh, if you're interacting with the, uh, the regular banking system, so the minute you're trying to uh, withdraw to um, an actual kind of bank, then you start to hit all these anti-money laundering and KYC things far more so than actually just uh, depositing and withdrawing in crypto. So um, if you are planning to take money out of any of these kind of platforms, you know, it's a good idea to get everything in um, in place now. So, you know, set up your bank accounts, do the test, you know, kind of like transfers, transfer a small amount in, transfer a small amount out, make sure that everything's kind of working. Um, you might hit, you know, snags when the amounts that you're moving in and out get larger, but uh, better to get your kind of like your, your banks, uh, the associated accounts, um, for both depositing and withdrawing kind of crypto set up now so that you're not sat there in maybe October or something like that, the price has surged massively up, and you need the money to do something and then you're suddenly sat uh, waiting for weeks and weeks waiting on support because you've triggered some kind of issue. So uh, apologies, I've gone a little bit longer than uh, normal. Um, Hopefully um, it's been interesting for you this week. Let me know if you have any questions on any of the uh, points that we've touched on. I hope you're keeping safe and well. Uh, give me a thumbs up. That would be fantastic. Um, hopefully I'll see you on the next video. But until then, have a great day. Bye bye.